We are back like bra straps. What's happening to y'all? Short intro real quick. Uh, salute to all the patrons. Salute to everybody that got a shirt. Salute to the Cowboy Zone Forum. Salute to the Cowboy subreddit. Y'all show a lot of love over there. Let's get into this video. It's a lot of interesting things here. Uh, can we give a shout out to our defensive coaching staff? Man, we got a lot of things done. We had a lot of moving pieces. When I first watched the game, it was kind of a blur. I was kind of in my emotion, didn't really get a good feel of what was going on. Um, but we got a good, clear view today. We're going to look at Jordan Lewis and the rest of the DBs. I feel like every DB had an impactful play today. As I look at my notepad, we got Jordan Lewis, um, A.B., Byron Jones, Cheeto Wuzier, Jeff Heath, Xavier Woods, Kevon Frazier, all made big plays. Let's take a look at it. Let's do this Jordan Lewis play first here, uh, just to kind of set the the table for the rest of it. Um, Jordan, we actually took Van Der Esch and Damian Wilson off the field. I thought we were going to do our three, two, six kind of look. And we kind of sort of are in a way, not really. But what we did differently is we kept four defensive linemen out there, right? I dropped the linebacker video yesterday, DBs today. But, man, when I dropped the D-line video, the whole defensive situation is just going to come together and make sense to us. But uh, we kept four defensive linemen out there because we needed to get the pressure. Jalen Smith is the lone Mike linebacker. We have our corners here, our, our basic nickel, nickel package corners and two safeties up high. But we got Jordan Lewis at the will linebacker spot and he's going to be responsible for chasing around Alvin Kamara um, there was a lot of man coverage in this I didn't really expect for us to to just flat out go man coverage with you know with a lot of these guys you know sometimes it was man across the board sometimes it was more of a more of a hybrid man type of look um, Byron Jones got got man down bottom but let's specifically look at Jordan Lewis on this play here. He's going to chase Alvin. Wherever Alvin goes, that's where Jordan's going to go. I got more evidence of this later on in the video. Let's run the play, then um, I'll break it down for a little bit. <clears throat> So Alvin's coming Alvin's coming out of the backfield. He's just going to show his number. Boom. Jordan didn't really get a solid commit to it because he's a two-way player now. He's in the middle of the field. If Jordan was on either sideline, he could take the, the inside leverage and just work the receiver towards the sideline. The problem is here, and let me go to the cartel view so we get a better idea of this. Um... The problem with this here is Jordan Lewis is here. He sees Kamara, right? But Kamara could go left. He could go right. So Jordan pretty much got to stay at home until Kamara commits to one direction. You don't want to just overplay one side and, and you get a big gain on the on the back end. That'll be bad for Jordan Lewis. But we see a lot of patience from Jordan. And it's like third and ten or something like that, third and eight. So Alvin's going to commit to the right side. Boom, we see that full commit. We see him getting that head around. We see him getting that, getting that, getting those hands up, showing his 41 to to um to uh, Drew Brees. And we see that once he gets that full hip turn, that's when Jordan really plants his foot and he goes and he makes the tackle short of the first down mark, right? Let's just show it one more time. And it was impressive by me because um, you know, Jordan is a good he's a he's a good enough tackler, but it was just interesting, uh, creativity wise from this um uh, from this um defensive staff. It was just interesting. Hey, instead of going like a full blown dime package, let's just play whatever we play, but let's put Jordan at Will Linebacker and we'll run it like that, which was very interesting to me. Let's keep watching. Let's take a look at this play here. <clears throat> Jordan Lewis is lined up in his um it's 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 a more centralized spot of the defense, but we're basically figuring things out. But his responsibility is to go wherever Alvin Kamara goes. Let me let me give y'all a little more screen. Alvin Kamara is gonna line up at the X up here. Jordan Lewis. He's going to go right with him. Let's run the play. Uh, I don't think this play has much to do with Jordan Lewis. I think this is more of a, like, we got called for a penalty or something for grabbing on this receiver or whatever. But I basically showed this to get the get the look of the of the uh, defensive, you know, you know what we did on, on defense, scheme-wise, right? Jordan Lewis chased Kamara wherever he went. And that's how we know it's, it's man coverage, right? Because if Kamara's going to gonna come out here, whoever's responsible for him in man coverage is going to go out there with him. This is where we have the advantage because any other game that would be Vanderish, any other game that'll be Deion Jones from the Falcons, any other game it'll be whoever the hell's playing linebacker for that team. You know what I mean? But the fact that the guy that we had playing linebacker was a corner, 
Jordan Lewis was extra comfortable out here uh, manning up on Alvin Kamara to the outside. And as you see, we got some pretty tight coverage in there. Jordan Lewis played a played a, a, a pretty tight game of, of, of uh, coverage right here. So brilliant move, brilliant move. Now, Alvin, um, you know, like first down, second down, we just kept Van Der Esch out there. Vandy, just run around, do your thing, and be you, and we'll just get him, get him there. Plus, if if you hand the ball off to Alvin, we'll just, you know, we'll just um, handle the run as is. But what happens when you line Alvin up at X? We have a uh, cornerback to line up out there with him, which is brilliant. Let's keep watching. And just the kind of formation that we see right here, uh, we got another go at it. Two high safeties. Uh, nickel everywhere else. Jordan is in the is in the uh, linebacker spot. Now him and um, and Jalen can, based on this look, they can switch linebacker spots. Right? Um, it's just based on on the alignment. Alvin's lined up over here, so so Jordan's going to be on this side. But if Alvin was to line up, um, you know, at this wing or something like that, then Jalen would shade more to the left side of the field. Then Jordan would come over and cover the shade. It's all about communication on this on this defense. And once those guys rallied the words around, once they got the got the words and the calls, the fronts communications out, we can line up accordingly. Well, we know young Alvin is right here, and if Alvin goes in motion anywhere, Jordan's going to run with him. But he didn't this time. Let's run it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And man, I can't wait until I drop the uh, the uh, D line video. Can't wait to drop this damn D line video because the pressure put on Drew Brees was amazing. First of all, man, this had a lot of nuance to it. Okay, just a broad look at the pressure. I'm not gonna break down the actual D line here. That's gonna be for the D line video coming up in the in a couple days or so like that. But just the pressure from Drew Brees. Let's just watch it. We got an errant throw from from uh, from Drew Brees. And in, in typical wisdom, if you get a if you get a blitz or if you get a heavy rush, you get the ball out to your safety valve, who is Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara is not going to be covered by a linebacker now. Your safety valve is going to be covered by a a cornerback with ball skills. So if we get good good pressure up front, Drew Brees goes straight to his safety valve. Cornerback is on your safety valve. Bad throw. We get the interception, man nasty nuanced football chess moves right there man nasty chess moves by our defense bro nasty let's watch the cartel view then we're going to get into the other dbs and the games that they had <clears throat> byron had a pretty uh pretty physical day we normally see byron just at the top of the screen the right corner back and he stays there but byron actually traveled around with um with Michael Thomas, which was very interesting to me. Um, so we got Byron. He's kind of clustered up here, but Byron's right there, right? And uh, he's going to be covering Michael Thomas. Let's talk about Byron and the player that he's been all year. Uh, let's just run this. So Byron, we know he's the the super athlete. He's a pretty great cover guy, and he sticks to these receivers, man. He sticks to these receivers. But if anything, if Byron and Cheeto had any problem, is actually finding the football and getting your hand to the football, getting your head around, right, finding the ball. We see that Byron actually has been working on that, right? Let's let's uh, break this down a little bit. So Byron's gonna line up pretty much head up, a slight a slight hinge on his outside shoulder. Maybe um, maybe Byron, you know. Worst case is trying to funnel him to the inside where help is, where Jalen is, where, um, you know, these other cornerbacks, these walk down safeties are. But um, he ends up going outside with him. So cool. Byron has to react to that. Boom, boom, boom. Gets back outside and he can run with him. Byron is a nasty little athlete. Look at Byron's hips right here. There's a combine drill for that. See, see, see how Byron can just turn around, flip his hips and and not lose steps. See that? So Byron's not losing any speed here you know and he's gonna run with him what i like about it at this point here is we look at byron jones he's chasing michael he's chasing michael michael gets his head around what's byron gonna do oh byron's getting his damn head around i'm so proud of him i'm so proud of byron jones when your receiver gets his head, when when your receiver gets his head get, gets his head around you get yours back too and man by the time the ball got there they both could play the ball in the air and um at this point you see michael thomas go up for the ball the ball is kind of in Michael's hand, but Byron was, was playing the ball this time, right? So by the time Michael and Byron hit the ground, 
the ball bobbled out a little bit. Now, we see you kind of faking like you caught it, but everybody, the sideline, the referee, my mama, yo mama, Byron Jones, Xavier Woods, we all know that the ball that the ball hit the ground because Byron jarred it out right at this point here, right? And he's able to do that because he could find the football. That's just a lot of improvement that I saw, uh, you know, from Byron Jones week 13, you know, just stuff that he wasn't doing week five or week four or whatever. Um, let's take a look at the cartel view. There you go. You see, you see, at this point, Byron is actually fishing his hands in there. He's actually trying to punch that ball out of there. And he does that successfully, right? And because of this, Sean Payton actually wastes the challenge and he's not able to challenge the, the bees play. So since we're on the topic of Michael Thomas, uh, let's look at him versus uh Cheeto Awuzier. Let's take a look at it. he's down bottom. Now Cheeto is is a similar type of specimen. He's a big physical athlete guy um, that needs to find the daggone football. Now, in this in this case, we see Cheeto didn't really use his eyes properly here. He was in great positioning though, Cheeto, because Cheeto's a fighter. Like Cheeto drives back to the football and he makes and he makes plays properly, right? Um, but however, but he really didn't use his eyes to 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 find the football but what he did was he used like just an instinctual reaction that when michael thomas goes up to get the football i'm just gonna tackle you fam. i'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna grab you <laughs> i was good don't will you, will you stop looking at the referee michael thomas would you stop sir please you ain't look for the referee this much all year man uh, so yeah, Cheeto had that instinctual. If I'm gonna get up in the air, uh, I'm gonna get up there with you. Um, it's just I think that's just physical play, man. I don't, I don't think it's really nothing to call there, but that could be cowboy bias. I'm not gonna speak on it too too much. Let's take a look at it from the cartel view. Uh, so yeah, once Cheeto really works on getting his eyes around on purpose and finding the football on purpose and not just stumbling into it, Cheeto gonna be nasty too. YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Vach Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute. Man, oh man. Um, what I like about my two safeties And after Jeff Heath I'm definitely going to get into his Xavier Woods Just a little bit <clears throat> Just to kind of um, highlight him a bit But let's take a look at Jeff Heath right here man um, The last couple of weeks Jeff Heath has showed all of his skill set really he showed his intelligence he showed his um his range he got ball skills he can cover guys he can play tight ends running backs whatever i want y'all to take a look at jeff heath and run support right here take a look at my marker man we got jeff heath right here and run support i just want y'all to see how downhill he gets and i want y'all to see this burst to go stop alvin kamara uh this man's playing like a madman. Look at Jeff Heath right here and how nasty he got with this burst right there. Look at him. Look at that burst. That, oh, look at that burst, man. What down is this? Second down or so? Second down? Sure. Alvin only gained like three yards here. And Jeff Heath is the is the deep damn safety. He going to get nasty, get downhill, quick break down and make a great open field tackle, man. Look at him. Break down, make the tackle. Nasty, Jeff Heath. Nasty. So I was just talking about the diversity of my safeties, about how they both have range, they both can cover, they both can play in the box, they both can play free. I want y'all to see the wood that is laid by Xavier here. And I'm not saying I'm not trying to punt on purpose. I'm not making a punt on purpose. Look at the wood that's gonna be laid by young Xavier Woods up here. Boy. <laughs> it causes a fumble and that fumble eventually gets him a first down but you know may, maybe this maybe this cat gonna think twice before he come across the middle like this man we got hitters on every level of this damn thing man and let's just watch x, x one more time he's gonna get a little depth he's gonna read it come down 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 Pop. boy boy oh boy let's take a look at anthony brown here right 
Anthony Brown is lined up on the 30. I had a notion the last video I did when I was breaking down the DBs. I had a thought that if everything's in front of Anthony Brown, then maybe he's good to go there. You know, when he has to turn his back to wide receivers like some of the outside corners, that's when Anthony Brown runs into a little bit of a problem. But if he can play at a little bit of depth, see things in front of him, then react, Anthony Brown is a much better corner. Let's take a look at it here. Now, Anthony Brown's deep, deep, deep. You see him keeps he keeps his he keeps his receiver in, in front of him. He never has to um, turn his back to the quarterback. Take a look at Byron up top, right? See how Byron turns his back to the uh, to the uh, quarterback. Then you got to play the receiver. You got to turn around and look for the ball. Anthony Brown never really had to do that because he's playing at this depth right now. He, he doesn't have to play up. And I think he's more comfortable playing at depth and seeing things in front of him, right? Um, so we're going to get a little bit of a run, 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 run. And Anthony just keeps it in front of him, keeps it in front of him. When it's time to find the ball, he bursts. And gets that damn football out of there. Good job. Great game, man. Great game. I already um, showed the linebackers and how well they did. Um, today I showed the uh, the uh, DBs, Jordan Lewis and, and the uh, DBs, to really show how great they were. The next film session is imperative that you watch it because I'm going to wrap it all in a bow. And it may not be the next film session. The next film session may be Cooper and Gallup. But I'm definitely going to drop the D-line film session at some point because I want to make sure I'm thorough with it. I'm going to drop the D-line film session. I want y'all to see how the D-line tied the whole defense into a bow. How it allowed our linebackers to run free. How the pressure up front allowed our cornerbacks and safeties to get good looks to play the football. To, uh, to get Drew Brees to make those errant throws all that's very very important here um i'm very i'm very proud of my of my young dbs or whatever they're all young guys man i think heath is the oldest or something like that i'm proud of all of them because everybody made a play uh jordan anthony byron uh cheeto jeff xavier Kayvon, they all made a big play that that mattered in this game at some point and uh, and i think that's a sign that's a sign of a young defense that's really getting it. That one guy isn't just having like 12 tackles or something. Everybody's getting involved. Everybody's making big big plays in coverage and the run game. And I think that's what we're going to need to run the table the rest of the season and also make a big push in the playoffs and maybe a Super Bowl. All right? <clears throat> so, um, like I said earlier, man, salute the Patreons. Um, salute everybody that bought a shirt, the Cowboys Zone Forum, uh, uh, the uh, Cowboys subreddit, man. Salute to all y'all guys. Y'all show a lot of love. Y'all appreciate what Vach Lombardi brings to the table, and I appreciate y'all back. Uh, hey, man, follow me on Twitter, Vach's Voice Podcast. Go get it. The Discord link is in the description. Go get your shirt. It's down there as well. Um, we got a lot of film to go through this week. I think up next we got Cooper and Michael Gallup. This is based on the votes. We got Cooper and Michael Gallup. Then we're going to get into the line then we're gonna get into the o line then we're gonna wrap up the week with um rico's blocking that'll probably be a shorter video um because we got a lot of film we got like 10 days to get this stuff out and um it's a lot of stuff we had to learn about this game so um i'm gonna be hard at work man but y'all if y'all keep appreciating me i'll keep holding it down for y'all so um y'all hold it down for the doski woski and the peace can we right? salute